the word that that I would say to everyone is simply this: multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of the Lord is at hand. And people are going to have to make decisions. That's what David said. The Lord impressed upon him the other night in prayer. David Langford. That's what Henry Groover said. The Lord gave him the message. The Lord basically said to me, Steve, from this point out, all that matters is souls. Because really, what can I do? What can I say? Do I need to write another book? No. What I need to do is to, if, to, to as many as received him. See, not everybody received Jesus. And it finally dawned on me, Doug, that not everybody is going to receive me. Jesus said they hated me without a cause. I said, well, Lord, if they hated you without a cause, and boy, I'm, I'm in good company. And the point that I'm trying to say is this. The truth will always bring out the greatest resistance. Because when you come to the point where you no longer lie to yourselves or others, but more importantly to God, that point when you're done lying to God and blaming Him for everything that went on in your life, when you don't realize the devil's been trying to take it, and he, by honoring your free will, has been putting roadblock and roadblock in your life to be able to come to accept Him. I'm telling you, Doug, the only thing that's going to move people uh, off dead center is a miraculous intervention of the Spirit of a living God in their specific lives. Not a general move, a specific move. You know where it starts with? God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Jesus, come into my heart. I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. I ask you to teach me what it means to be a follower. And I repent, Lord, of all my sin. Somebody says, oh, that's just easy believism. No, that's just the beginning. That's the hardest decision anybody will ever make in their life. And it's the easiest, too. It's easy to make it. But once they make it, obviously, God will move heaven and earth. And I've said this before, Doug, we have lost track of eternity so that the only thing that matters is the immediacy of our, our current situation. In other words, am I, am I fed? Am I having enough this or that? You know, Are my needs met? Are my vacation requirements met? Vacation? Yep. i got news for you. The day of vacations are coming to an end. Yep. Are my TV shows on? Uh, you know, yeah, am I having a yeah. good day? You know, am I feeling bad for myself? Am I, you know? And that's part of it. The the slothfulness. The yeah, self- here's another one. This is I want to answer this one email on the air because I get this probably 25 times a week. Okay, uh, you know, in the event we do go to war, do you think we should do as Jesus didn't allow the demons to kill us without a fight? Jesus did not allow anyone to kill him. He said, "No man takes my life; I lay it down." Or do you think it's okay? to take a life in this battle to protect family. Absolutely. Self-defense is a mandatory requirement of the Scripture. Paul said, if any man doesn't provide for his family, he's worse than an infidel. For God to deny self-defense would be to sanction suicide. And that's why, Doug, I believe a false error in understanding of self-defense. Look, even the disciples had to sell their cloaks and buy a couple swords, okay? Uh, You know, Paul had to travel with the sword. There were really bad people in Paul's day. But Paul determined and nothing was going to stop him until God told him, Paul, your time's up. Time to come home. And so, you know, I, this thing about pacifists, I don't know if you guys saw the biggest story, I believe, was that uh, the DHS has been partnering with churches, and the churches, especially, I think, 20 black churches now, are asking their parishioners to turn in their guns, okay? Yeah. Well, I think one of the greatest crimes that has ever happened is, is that the, the, uh, <laughs> the idea of self-defense and personal responsibility have never been linked. I can tell you point blank that the idea is this, simply this. If the Second Amendment goes, you go. And somebody says, well, you, well what are you going to do? I said, well, by the grace of God, I intend to resist evil. Do I believe that uh, I can overcome a hellfire missile from a drone? No, but Jesus can. And until I'm done, they can't take me with a Hellfire missile or a sniper's bullet. Or in your case, Doug, blowing up your car. Or in my case, sending teams from Buffalo. You know, the point is is that, that we have a destiny to fulfill. Because God is not going to basically allow the total taking out. Jesus wasn't allowed to be killed. They tried to kill Jesus so many times before the crucifixion. But when the crucifixion time came, Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane asking the Lord to allow allow him, uh, not, nevertheless, not to take the cup from him. See, every Christian I know that believes in the pre-tribulation rapture, which, by the way, I believe is the great deception, part of the great deception, because the thing is, those people were given a lie. They believe a lie. Now, what does a lie do when it's believed, okay? Number one, he 
gives the lie power over you. Number two, it changes your perspective. Number three, it causes you to let off your guard. Number four, it provides an unrealistic expectation. And, and number six, and maybe even number six and seven, is it gives you a hope that isn't real, and it gives you a disappointment when it fails. Now, I've never said that in that order before because I've never dealt with that in that issue before. The issue with the rapture isn't to argue with me and give me your proof text because I can give you as many as you give me. It's to take it to Jesus. It's to be faithful unto the end. Why does Jesus say to them that overcome will I give a crown? Okay, well, it's different than overcoming. And, and by the way, you guys, the greatest slaughter in the history of modern-day Christendom was in China when the Chinese Christians embraced the pre-tribulation rapture and the Prophets went around telling them not to worry, and guess what? They needed to worry. They needed to heed the words of the real ones. And as Watchman E said in his book, he said, it's that they failed to heed the, the true prophets of God and listen to the lies who promised them the easy way out. If someone tells you you're going to go through it tough, if they prepare you to go through it tough, it's like boot camp. It's like training. And that's what the churches have failed to do. That's why when God starts to judge, I'm telling you, this. You couldn't get me within a hundred yards of a church with a lukewarm pastor. I don't want to be there. I don't want to be there when the people finally figure out they've been lied to. I don't want to be there if God chooses in that specific instance, and I certainly wouldn't go there if a church is saying, turn in your firearms to be good citizens, you know? What about citizens of heaven? What about having a, a responsibility to your fellow men to make a difference and to help them? And by the way, I'm no bleeding hard liberal. I'm probably the end antithesis of that, but neither am I a neocon, a conservative, a Republican. Those words all make me vomit, because it's part of the same uh, 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 paradigm. It's two sides of an evil coin. And ladies and gentlemen, either get a death one way or death the other. And I like what somebody said, they had a battle cry, no king but Jesus. That certainly doesn't make the liberals happy. But you see, everyone's looking for a political solution still. When I hear a Christian, tell me they're Christian, then that they just can't wait for, uh, you know, the, the guy running against uh, uh, Obama to win, you know, and, and even the Ron Paul people. I said, I love Ron Paul's fan on the economics. I was trained in the Austrian School of Economics. I read Rothbard. I read uh, uh, all of the different, you know, even even guys like Gary North and, 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 oh, good night, so many of them for so many years. But the point being is that we're in a time period unlike any other. Jesus said there's never been a time like it, nor would there ever be another time like it again. And except the days be shortened, there'll be no flesh alive. Yet for the elect's sake, those days are going to be shortened. That's why everybody turns, uh, uh, they, they go to work on Monday, and it seems like you jump from Monday to Friday to Sunday and just to go start the whole thing over. Where's the rest of the week? It's gone. Time is speeding up. Absolutely. And Steve, I've been uh, having this you know, great deception. I've been thinking about this for the last three days. I, I can't stop thinking about it. I've been reading the Bible. And all I can think of, and you talk, you hit the key, the political solution. So many people are sucked into that. Now we have people talking about, uh, and this is for some reason uh, what I've been hearing, uh, the fall of the New World Order. If that were to happen, and certain people would uh, come out and claim responsibility for that, and they would say, look, we took out the corruption, we took out the problems, you know, come trust us. Uh, something like that. The blue beam rapture. Uh, people are talking about this everywhere. There's the New Agers out there, and they're everywhere. And they've infiltrated everything on the Internet. And this is what they're... Oh, sure, they're and, I, and I want to tell everybody, I categorically <laughs> renounced the whole Drake movement. I categorically renounced the whole Benjamin Fulford thing. I, and look, those guys have their opinions, but uh, can I tell you something? Uh, as Paul Volcker said, the former head of the Fed, hell, son, we own them all. The point being is <laughs> that they're still locked into a paradigm, and look, they want... Can I tell you what everybody wants? They want peace without Jesus, because Jesus has his demands and his demands are number one thou shalt have no other gods before me 
If you guys even could, if, I think if any of us could get a true glimpse of the occultism in the White House, as of the occultism in the Illuminati, of the human sacrifice, even the even some of the Satanists that I've talked to over the years, even some of the ultimate Luciferians, they say it still surprises us, Steve. And then look. Those guys talk to me. I'm not saying I carry on extensive conversations, but in times past when they have, they, they said, you Christians are too bloody dumb to understand. We're the ones behind abortion. I actually stood them straight and I said, no, you weren't. It was the fallen angels, but you're their offspring. So, yeah, yeah, you can take claim for it in this generation. That is my answer, by the way. And the point is, they say, you, they're just too dumb to see. This is the ultimate sacrifice to Lucifer. That's why Hawk always says the Lucy sacrifice. That's what war is, you guys. War is the blood sacrifice of the Luciferian powers that be to their their God, their God of war. You know, the Romans may have called him Mars, and the Greeks may have called him something else. Nobody else called it, but the bottom line, it's the same behind the scenes.